welcome to the Bridge Connection today. Uh, we're going to go a little bit different direction. We will be back in John, be in chapter 15, start chapter 15 tomorrow. But I just have some things on my heart. Just because of some, what, what happened yesterday, what we were all watching yesterday as our nation's capital was being seized and um, the attitudes and the violence and the uh, what people are saying on both sides and it's just a it's breaking my heart our nation is in a terrible terrible position probably the worst we've ever been there we've always had differences of opinion different political parties uh republican and and democrat as old as i am i've gone through many presidents and some i vote for voted for made it some of them didn't but we got through each four-year term or then we turned some of them turned into eight and we survived and uh we didn't stop liking people because they were on one side of the spectrum and we were on the other side we just put our differences behind us and we worked together and played together and prayed together and went to church together and and all of those things and it's just not the same anymore and um you know we're they're kind of rewriting you know, our history in, in our school books. And, uh, you know, I was remembering when they took um, prayer out of the schools, our, our children were able to, to pray, you know, up until the 1960s. And they learned about their country's Christian heritage and so forth. But today, that's all been changed because we've changed the history. Let me read you some quotes, okay? Some quotes of some of our founding fathers, Patrick, Patrick Henry. It cannot be emphasized too strongly that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians on the gospel of Jesus Christ. George Washington in his farewell address said, do not let anyone claim to be a true American who attempts to remove religion from politics. Listen to this one, John Witherspoon. He was a signer of the Declaration of Independence and uh, president of Princeton University. He said, those who pay no regard to religion and seriousness in the persons whom they send to the legislature or of any state are guilty of the greatest absurdity and will soon pay dear for their folly. Listen to this one. May every citizen in the army and in the country have a proper sense of deity upon his mind and an impression of the declaration recorded in the Bible him that honoreth me, I will honor, but he that despiseth me shall be lightly esteemed. Samuel Adams, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. We have no government armed with the power capable of contending with human passions, unbridled by morality and true religion. Our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. John Adams, our second president, in an address to the military leaders. Our government was not made for people that don't trust and believe in God. <laughs> God who gave us liberty, who gave us life, gave us liberty. And can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have removed their only firm basis? a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are the gift of God, that they are not to be violated, but with his wrath. Indeed, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just, that his justice cannot sleep forever. Thomas Jefferson. It's engraved on the Jefferson Memorial. We have staked the whole future of American civilization, not upon the power of government, far from it. We've staked the future of all of our political institutions upon the capacity of mankind for self-government, upon the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves, to control ourselves, to sustain ourselves according to the Ten Commandments of God. James Madison. <laughs> And then it goes on and on and on. There, there are so many. Let me just stop and just share some things on, on my heart. There's some more that I want to I want to give to you in a few minutes, but uh, I just uh, even some more current ones. Uh, 
But as, as I was uh, reading John 15 in preparation for today's study, actually, uh, it's talking about abiding in him. And it made me think about a section of scripture in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. And it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. See, in, in, in John chapter 15, it tells us that he is the vine, we are the branches, and as we abide in him, then we're going to have much fruit. And if we don't abide in him, we'll have no fruit and we'll just die and, and uh, be cut off the tree. And, and I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about, you know, we'll have much fruit. And then I thought about Galatians 5, you know, 22 and 23 here. And I thought about the fruit of the Spirit. And I thought about what's the answer? What's the answer to our chaos, to our, is it, you know, more, more uh, uh, investigations into things or more special prosecutors, uh, you know, all of these things. And, and uh, how, do, how, do we, how do we begin, begin to accept each other again? I, I truly believe that without God in our nation, we're not gonna survive. We're not, we will never be the nation that we once were. We will never be a strong, powerful nation. You know, what happened yesterday that was, it was, that was revealed all over the world there are nations laughing at us right now. We, we look like a third world nation yesterday and um, we're acting like one. And I believe the only answer, it's as if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face. Then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Well, how do we do that as a nation? How do we get back to that place where uh, we're, we're trusting in him, where we're, we're, we're unashamed to declare who he is and we're unashamed to reveal that we are a nation that is based upon the principles of Jesus Christ. And um, I think it starts with me. I think it starts with you. I think we have to, as individuals, one at a time, get back to that place of being who God wants us to be. And who he wants us to be are people abiding in him so that we can bear his fruit. What is his fruit? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. So what am I saying? I'm saying that we need to come back to that place where we realize that we can only abide in him as we allow the Holy Spirit to live in us. He sent the Holy Spirit to live in us so that we can, so he can abide in us, so that he can lead us and guide us. And he can remind us of those things that Jesus said. He can lead us into all truth. He can show us what's right. And we've, we've strayed so far as a nation from that and, and so far in the church many times from that and in our families and as individuals. We need to get back to that place where these founding fathers were, that without Jesus Christ, there is no way, there is no hope. We're not going to make it. We're not, we're not sharp enough. We can't do it. We, we need divine guidance in our lives as fathers, as mothers, as husbands and wives, as workers, as pastors, as ministers, as educators, as, as government workers, as, and the list goes on and on and on. But we need to come back to that place it's got to start with me. It's got to start with you to that place where I realize I'm going to abide. I'm going to abide as a branch in the vine. And I'm going to let his life flow through me so I can bear fruit. And the fruit I'm going to bear is I'm going to bear fruit of love. Love is such an overused word. We love our wives. We love our new car. You know, we love this dessert. You know, we love our nation. Uh, you know, we, we love our children. And we use this word for everything. Well, <clears throat> this word love is a special word. It's not to be used for everything. There are special words. There are several words in the Greek language for love. This one is the word uh, agape or agapao. It, it, it means 
Well, it's, it's the love that God displayed. He was talking about in John 3, 16, where he says, for God so loved, this is the word he uses, loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Agape love is a giving love. It gives expecting nothing in return. Now there's a love that expects something in return. It's, it's phileo love. It's, um, then there's also a, 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 a love for husband and wife and children and so forth. But the phileo love is a love where I have friends, you have friends, and we hang out together and we, you know, we do things together, go to sporting events together, go eat together, talk together, laugh together, cry together, whatever. I give you something, you give me something just in our relationships and who we are. And that's a phileo love. We give some, we get some, and we, we have those people in our lives and it's, 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 it's wonderful, you know. And um, then there's the husband and wife, the Eros kind of love, and that's a deeper kind of love. But this love we're talking about here is the word agape, which means that it's the same love that Jesus Christ had on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. Those were people that had nailed him to a cross. They had beat him with a, you know, a whip, uh, they they were mocking him, spitting upon him, uh, all and they placed a crown of thorn on his thorns on his head. I mean, the excruciating pain he was going through with the asphyxiation and the way that he was on the cross. And he says, "Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing." But that's the kind of love that is to be part of our lives and part of our lives. Now, there's love, joy, peace, and all of these things, and each one of those things. Our fruit, it's a fruit of the spirit where people should be able to partake of the fruit that is being manifested in my life and your life. Okay, we abide in him. We're going to have fruit. We're going to be fruitful. Okay, that fruitful, fruitfulness is going to be when people need love, they're going to bump into my life. They're going to bump into your life and they're able to partake of love. They're gonna, you're gonna be talking to them and all of a sudden they're gonna, they're gonna sense love. They don't have any love. They're broken, they're hurt, they've been rejected. You're gonna tell them about Jesus and, and you're gonna love them, you know, and, and your family, whatever. You know, it's just, it's a real love and, 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 and they're gonna be able to partake of that love in your life. People that uh, are so broken right now and so hurting and so upset and so angry with everybody and there's no peace ready to fight, ready to, to destroy, ready to, and, and they need to be able to, as believers, they need to be able to bump into my life, bump into your life, and receive peace. They need to hear about the peace of God coming from our lips. They need to be able to watch our lives and see the peace of God. What is the peace of God? It's a peace that passes all understanding. It's not a peace that means it's, there's an absence of conflict. That's, that's just not peace. Peace is the ability to stand in the midst of whatever's going on, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the conflict, in the midst of the situation, I can have a peace. And I don't need to be manipulated by the situation, no matter how devastating that is or how hurting it is or anything else. I don't need to be manipulated by that. I need to be able to have that peace in my own life. We talked about peace yesterday on the program. We talked about there's the peace with God, there's the peace of God, there's the peace from God. And all of that is the peace that we can have. And as we abide in him, how do we abide in him? We pray, we read his word, we hang out with him, we worship him, we honor him, we talk to him, we tell the Holy Spirit as we're walking through life, we talk to Jesus and they, hey, I'm going through a situation. I don't know what to do. Remind me of things that Jesus told me. Jesus, you know, help me right now and, and let me walk in this truth and let me walk in this direction and let me reveal, you know, who you are. And it goes all the way through the through through all of the parts of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. Long suffering is patience. So many of us don't have any patience anymore. You know, if that car in front of us doesn't take off immediately when the green light turns, we're ready to honk our horn. Why, are we in that big a hurry? No, we're really not going anywhere, special. But we can't wait, you know, and everything, we, 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 it's, 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 just, it's terrible, everything has to be quick. You know, everything has to be instantaneous for us because we, we have no patience. 
We have to get everything right now. Everything has to be so fast. And we need to learn patience. We're, we're people who are frustrated in, in, in life and they need to be able to bump into us, you know, and all of a sudden there's, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a patience. There's a, a tolerance for things. It's that we're not being blown away by every thing that's happening right now. And it's, you know, it's okay. We've got long suffering. There's kindness. You know, there's not a lot of kindness anymore. There's goodness. You know, kindness is just allowing the other person to, to receive more than, than, than I receive. You know, I just want to be kind in that way. I, I, one of the things that, that I, I told Wanda when we first got married, and I told her probably 12 times, maybe a few more, a few less, I don't know, but half a dozen times or so throughout our 57 years of marriage, uh, that I wanted her to be a better person because she lived with me than if she hadn't. And I, I tried to do that. Did I always measure up to that? Absolutely not. Did I always fulfill that? Absolutely not. That was my desire. I failed probably more than I succeeded, but that was my desire. That's what I wanted. And that's what I want with my life right now. I, I, I want to be a person that that, that that person that is so frustrated, that individual who is so filled with hate right now, I want them to, to, to come into my life somehow and hear about God's love, see God's love through the way that I live, see God's love in my family and in our church and just all of us and whoever we are, man. And, I think it's so, so important that, that we live that. Because, guys, if we don't, if we don't, we're not going to see the change. I, I don't think the change is going to come any other way. I don't think the change is going to come through um, who we elect this year, four years from now. I don't think the change is going to come because of who got elected in Georgia and who didn't get elected. I don't think anything. I think the change is only going to happen in our nation as we started, just individuals, I'm gonna walk with Jesus. I'm gonna abide. I'm gonna abide in the vine. Lord, fill me, produce fruit in my life. Lord, I can't make myself peaceful. I can't make myself joyful. I can't make myself be kind or gentle. I can't do that, man. I'm a mess, but I'm trusting you that as I choose to abide in you and walk with you, and surrender to you that it'll begin to happen in my life. And then I'm going to be affecting other people because they're going to be experiencing you. They're going to see you as the answer. And and, and Lord, help me to do that. Um, help my brothers and sisters to do that. You know, help help your family to begin to to take some 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 stands that uh, that, that that we need to take as believers, and not just words. Not, not just words, not just things that, that we're saying, you know, um, uh, I, I, want us, I, want us, I want it to be real. I, I want to be real. I want to be so filled with the very presence of God that, um, man, nothing else matters because I believe he's the answer. And I believe that's what he means by if my people humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and you know, it's it's humbling yourself because it's a it's a lot easier just to argue. It's a lot easier just to uh, you know um, uh, just give people a piece of our mind or tell them what we think or you know do something and and uh, demonstrate somewhere or something. I I want to demonstrate every day of my life. I want to demonstrate the life of Jesus Christ with every breath that I take. How many I have left? I don't know but I want to demonstrate his life by the way that I live, the way I talk, the way I think, the way I deal with people, the life that I live, the choices that I make. I want to live in such a way that the world will know that Jesus Christ is real and, and um, <laughs> he's the only answer for, for what we're going through, you know? Let me find a couple other things I want to read to you here, all right? There's so many... Here's some, some, here's one from George Washington. He says, no country upon earth ever had it more in its power to attain blessings than United America. Much to be regretted would be 
were we to, re to neglect the means to depart from the road which providence has pointed us to so plainly. Here's something that um, Ronald Reagan said at a prayer breakfast. He said, Abraham Lincoln once said, I would be the most foolish person on this footstool earth if I believed for one moment that I could perform the duties assigned to me without the help of one who is wiser than all. I know that in the days to come and the years ahead, there are going to be many times when there will only be one set of footprints in my life. If I did not believe that, I would not face the days ahead. Ronald Reagan, quoting George Washington, National Day of Prayer in 1981. Calvin Coolidge said, Our doctrine of equality and liberty and humanity comes from our belief in the brotherhood of man through the fatherhood of God. Theodore Roosevelt, the teachings of the Bible are so interwoven and entwined with our whole civic and social life that it would be literally, I, I, I do not mean figuratively, I mean literally, impossible for us to figure to ourselves what life would be if these teachings were removed. We would lose almost all the standards by which we now judge both public and private morals, all the standards towards which we with more or less resolution strive to raise ourselves. John F. Kennedy said, the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. And Ronald Reagan said, freedom prospers when religion is vibrant and the rule of law under God is acknowledged. Hmm. Woodrow Wilson, America was born a Christian nation America was born to exemplify that devotion to the elements of righteousness, which are derived from the revelations of Holy Scripture. And I could go on and on and on, but I just, I just want to close. I want to close there because I, I don't want you to just miss, miss my, my intent and my thought today. We can't change the world. We, we, nobody's going to, you know, listen to me or you and, all of a sudden, they're going to change their direction. And, but we can begin to walk the way we're supposed to walk. And maybe I'll affect a couple of folks. And you'll affect three or four. And then I'll affect another one. And then pretty soon somebody else is. And then they're affecting others. And it's, that's, that's the way Christianity works. It's the way it worked with the first disciples. And the way it still works. It's not just our events at church, you know. And. We were so anxious to get back to church. And things get things the way they were. I don't want things the way they were. I want I want to get back to our church services. I want to be with my family. I love our church. And I want to hug people. And I want to be with people and pray with them and cry with them and laugh with them. Absolutely. But that's not that's that's not my goal. My goal is that we would be the church, not just on Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights or whatever, but we would be the church in the world. That's what we're supposed to be. You and I, walking out our lives in the power of the Holy Spirit, abiding in Him and His words abiding in us. And we're going to see some hell gates broken down. We're going to see some lives changed. And I believe He's talking to a lot of churches, a lot of believers, a lot of people. I believe that with my whole heart. I'm, I'm praying that we are, people are praying right now for their nation that they watched what they watched yesterday and their hearts were broken enough that they fell on their face and cried out to God and said, God, we want to humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways. Seek your face. That's what we want to do. So God, start with me. That's all I can do, Lord. I pray for anybody watching right now or listening right now. Just anybody in your hearts you want to touch, Lord. Uh, just start in us. Let's pray, shall we? Let's just pray together. Father, I, I, just, I, I just want to have the same heart that many of our founding fathers had. I want us to realize that unless we're built upon you 
and your word, we're not going to make it. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. We're not sharp enough. We're not deep enough. We just can't do it on our own, Lord. A lot of men think they are. They all think they, so many think they have the answer, but it's all going to fail. It's going to turn to nothing. Lord, give us a fresh desire for you to be in our lives, for you to be in our homes, our families, our children, and anybody that we touch or affect, that we would live in such a way that they could partake of the fruit of who you are and what you desire for them. And Lord, I pray that just through us making decisions and maybe scores of other people all over this nation tonight, just because you're speaking to so many people, more tomorrow, the next day, that's what I'm, that's what I'm asking for, Lord. I'm asking for a revival, a revival in our nation. It's not gonna work, Lord. Our nation isn't gonna survive and be who she's supposed to be unless there's a returning to you. Lord, do some supernatural things. Change some hearts. I would love to see prayer back in schools. I'd love to see the Bibles back in schools. God, just do some supernatural things. God, turn the heart of this nation toward you, Lord. We pray for our nation right now. There would be a revival like we've never seen before. We ask it in your name, Jesus. We make ourselves available for whatever you have for us. Thank you. Amen. We'll get back into John tomorrow. Just pray, would you? If you haven't been praying much, would you get to commit to some more prayer? Just pray for our nation. Pray for you. Pray for me. Just pray that we would be the tools God wants us to be. Pray that there would be an awakening in our nation. God's just done it before. He can do it again. Keep the faith, man. Okay. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Talk to you tomorrow.